First Where's disclaimer, I am presenting all of this advice as my personal opinion for how to win in solo queue. I am talking purely about maximizing our solo queue win rates on Lotus. And this is my opinion on how you can do that. If you attempt to use any of this advice in your coordinated five stack games, you cannot hold me accountable for the L's you may take. However, you may also gain ELO. Want to get coached? It's free. Join the Discord, read the VOD submission rules, submit a VOD for my moderation team to approve, and then show up to any VOD review stream and enter the raffle. Check the events tab on my Discord to see when the next VOD review stream is. Enjoy the video. Now, with that in mind, I'm going to open my solo queue tier list for Lotus. Here's who I'm thinking you guys should be looking to play. So there's a couple things to break down here as to why certain agents are in the S tier, but you'll notice a significant amount of pop flashes in S tier, and you'll also notice Harbor in S tier. And there's an except, there's one stipulation for this Harbor pick in S tier is that you need the Sentinel to be Cypher. If your Sentinel is Killjoy, then Omen or Astra are both better picks, okay? So if your Sentinel player doesn't pick Cypher, you, you want to favor Omen or Astra, and I will explain why. Uh, otherwise, these Flash agents are so good, and let me show you. So I went around and I, like, mapped the defensive Flash zones on this map, and there's so many of them. There's so many Flash zones on this map, and you're probably wondering, what's a Flash zone, Wuhujin? Well, a Flash zone refers to um, an area of the map where if the enemies are in it and you flash them, they're kind of dead. <laughs> so, for example, let's say they're in tree. That flash there just fully blinds everybody in tree and they've got no escape. So they have to dodge the flash. And that now you can see why Phoenix, in my opinion, is S tier. Because Phoenix flash is nearly undodgeable. They're in tree. You throw the Phoenix flash around the corner and you take your free kills. And there's so many flash zones. Once again, here you can see that's the tree one I was talking about. The yellow refers to where you would stand. And the red refers to where they will be when you kill them. So let's continue. Let's run through all the flash zones. So this flash zone out here in the open is frequently smoked off. Where there'll be a smoke here. And I'm actually going to swap. I'm going to stay on Sky. So it'll be smoked off. And you can like flash out of the smoke and peek right here. And these dudes are, they're stuck out in the open. No good cover. No good cover. Occasionally, you can find yourself getting all the way over here. Maybe you're playing Yoru. Or maybe they've smoked the cross and you've taken this space. Bam. Flash zone. As we saw in that Yoru clip, these players here got nowhere to run. The flashers are eating real good on this map. Continue. Continue. Look at this. Look at that. That's a perfect flash for these guys. Look at this. The flashes are everywhere. And look how open this is. Yeah, I bet you guys haven't seen that. Yoru can bounce his flash through that. Sky can flash through that. Here, wait, I'll show you Yoru real quick. He just bounced it down. Bam. It pops right here. Look, that's the whole site. And these people out in the open, they're crying. They're crying. Yeah, you can't even see the hole from this side, but it's there. It's there. Okay, continuing. Continuing flash zones. So that's on B. Here's another big one. Watch your eyes. This whole area here. Another big one. Over towards C. This one's really strong. You're playing defense. You're playing here. It's right around this corner. All of these people. And you're going to notice because of all these flashes, the way that you route on offense is really important. Like if you're routing C, you don't want to route this way because you're going to die. You want to route this way. Because that way you've got some close cover in mind for when you inevitably get flashed on this map. Because <laughs> it happens all the time. Here's another good one on C. If they're coming out sand, this flash here is just really good. These guys are stuck. And then there's one more that I've listed on my sheet, which is from here. On like a retake scenario, these guys here are stuck out in the open. So this is where you want to generally be prioritizing your flashes on agents like breach phoenix sky and that is personally why i've placed them in the s tier on this map okay now let's talk harbor and cypher so the reason why i only want you picking harbor in the event that you have a cypher is because this c site on defense is very hard to lock down without a vision denial ability the reason ko is lower yeah his flashes are just underwhelming in my opinion without a lot of prep 
And this is a solo queue tier list. K is kind of too supportive for my liking for solo queue. Okay. So with Cypher, he can sort of deny all of this vision and really kind of lock down this site, in my opinion. And he's very good at it. But without that, like let's say Killjoy's playing here, I find it too common that they want to smoke here. So they want like an Omen smoke or an Astra smoke. So if your team has Cypher and he can cage off an Anchor C, then playing Harbor is fine. But without this additional stalling utility, I find Harbor to be too weak. Okay. So like solo Harbor. So if you have the Cypher, then pick Harbor all day. But if you have like a Killjoy, then I think Omen and Astra are S tier in that event. But Omen, in my opinion, a bit better. And let me explain. So if we're Wap, Rock and Omen, and generally I like playing the um, controllers on A side, um, these types of like angles up here are really hecking good. Really good. I love these types of angles for Omen at this type of flash, even just taking this fight. Nobody clears up here as far as I can tell in solo queue. They can't see that TP. They just hear a TP. They think you're here. It's really strong to play Omen on this map. And so it, when you've got the Killjoy, especially, you just rock Omen and you play towards A. And then notice, this is where um, you're going to get lots of flash value again. So just like this is a sky flash zone, if they commit to the A hit, you can punish here. And that really is what these doors are for. So let me show you the doors. Uh, I'm going to give it to you as an analogy from another map that you probably understand a bit better if you've watched my streams. So let's take Icebox. I'm sure by now, if you've catched enough JG content, you'd know in higher ELO, the optimal routing is along this edge. And this is to minimize the amount of risk you take from fights on like two sides. So if you're out this way, you can get shot at from multiple directions as indicated by these arrows. However, if you route along like the edge, it's a lot safer and more consistent. Lotus is sort of the same idea, except you advertise to the enemy team that you're committing to the A hit. So when you open the door, you receive simpler pathing in exchange for committing to hitting A and having to deal with this really risky space. But if you can push through this risky space, then it's a lot easier to hit A from here. And so it's a decent trade. Um, it's a lot harder to hit A site from here. So if you're going to hit A, then using the door is generally recommended. Um, as long as you know that you're not going to get railed by like flashes. Okay. That's how I see this door over here. I see it as like, a, I receive a slightly easier A hit. You receive um, this flash zone to play around me and you know that I'm hitting A early, okay? So that's how I see this type of door situation. And that's why I think it's really strong for these flash agents on defense to play on these this A site uh, because they can essentially like fully clear it. And let me show you some of my Harbor tricks here because of course Harbor does not have stalling utility. So I position Harbor also on A side. And what I really like is actually like throwing the wall out like this and I leave a lip for myself. And the reason I leave this lip is if they commit to the door, I've got like an additional cheeky angle to sort of play around. And I find this like really, really interesting. Once again, you can even wall deeper. They're pushing up. They open their door. I heckin' did I miss my wall already? Yeah, I did. <laughs> I'm not going to open the door. I'm just going to go through it. They come through and then there's this interesting wall. And it's kind of difficult for them to play around. I'm not going to go into too much agent specific tech, but here in A tier, we'll quickly go through them. Viper, if you've got prep, I think is really strong. You just have to make sure you've got that orb I mentioned towards C if you don't have a cypher who can anchor the site. I'm sure you can find a way to get that down. You Viper mains are turbo nerds. Yoru is really good. KO is good. Anyone with a flash is essentially immediately A tier or higher. The one exception being Reyna, who still is strong for like cooking, like if you're just a solo queue demon, but I can't rate her highly on the merits of her utility alone. Raze is pretty good. And this will, I want to talk about this. So I'm sure you guys have seen it. The enemy team util dumping hard right here at the start of the round on defense with a fade suck a raise nade a breach stun everything you know uh i think this in general is strong but i think you want to threaten this i don't think you want to do it um what do i mean by that 
So you definitely need to do it at least once or twice during the half, but you should only do it to a degree where you know the attackers are worried about it as a threat. The moment the attackers are calming to their team, yo, let's wait three seconds in case they nade it. That's when you want to stop nading it. So this is like a mini game that you're trying to play. So I don't want to see you just chucking your util here at the start of every round. That's a turbo waste because you're going to condition them. And once you feel like you've conditioned them, chillax, chillax, take your extra time now and use it to get advantageous angles on them. Okay. But do not just huck your util here off rip. A lot of the time I won't, I wouldn't even throw it round one because you're out here thinking, okay, I'll throw it right away and condition them. Nah, you know what happens in round one? These guys go, yo, they've got raise. She might need this. Let's wait a couple seconds. People do this all the time because they're so used to running into this pressure. So I suggest doing it um, like round three because round one, they're going to expect it. Round two, they might expect it. And then they're going to be like, oh, she doesn't throw it. And that's when you throw it. That's when you throw it. And then you've like conditioned them into worrying about this early A pressure. Okay, let's talk. We're going to go back to our S tier because I'm mostly going to focus around how I'd play with this type of team composition. You're going to notice that uh, Phoenix is like a mainstay and Phoenix, basically you want to try and orb farm. So if you're trying to win in solo queue as much as possible, you should be playing this agent on this map. 30 seconds left. This is the agent. This is the agent chat. This guy can cook. If you've got all the map knowledge and you're just trying to I can gain elo, this is the cook. Okay, so the orbs on this map are all fairly difficult for um, both teams to contest. But I think the C orb is the most straightforward for like the Phoenix to farm, mostly because it's right out here. And it's very unlikely that the enemy team's flasher is going to commit to playing this far up and contesting. And if they do, this is really good for us. Because you essentially have your um, have your homies walk up here. You could have dudes play anti using the mound. They can take these fights and it's really tough for this guy to swing out and contest this orb when there's all of these threats so phoenix can sort of like on offense farm this orb hard and on defense the a orb is kind of really straightforward for you to farm back all right so the a orb here is really easy for phoenix to contest mostly because this whole space here is a massive flash zone so yeah the orb is out in the open but like you just have to contest this space early in the round, like sort of like a um, dish on Fracture where the orb is out in the open. But if you wait to contest the space until they've come up and you look to cook, you play like your wall to bait them up close. You can flash again, uh, play better than me, though. Don't heck and die. You can fight for this orb pretty strongly. Like if they contest you back to stop you from taking the orb, I think you've got good odds because this open space really favors the Phoenix flash. And then, of course, on defense, if your teammates don't want to fight with you, A is not working. This B orb is really straightforward for us to contest with our flash. You just have to wrap it around. And all you need to do is make sure it's getting... It's actually kind of tricky, but you need to get it around this corner. You can barely pop it uh, near this penguin such that it blinds this guy. You have to make sure that you're blinding that guy. Because if you're not, then this flash is no good. Um, so you'll have to work on this and test it. Um, but you can you can even like slightly peek around the corner to throw it. All right, I clicked the wrong way and that, that should be able to reach over here. I've hit it a couple times. So as a Phoenix main, you should prep that you get that flash down and then you can look to contest this orb. So defense is all about setting up these flash plays and pretty much like orb farming for your like Phoenix if you have him. And now I'm going to try and talk about why it's like that because of how I think offense is best played on this map. So what I've been seeing and what I would recommend is you play a very linear offense. Um, in solo queue, keeping it simple is very important. And on this map, I actually find it very effective to mostly just contact. So you can just call contact explodes back to back to back to back to back. Um, like for example, you just contact C, you just shift walk up. If they ever peek out, you've got a huge advantage because they just peeked into a lot of players. But let's say they don't peek out. You're just walking, 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 peeking, peeking, no noise, no noise. And eventually you'll make contact. That guy will usually die one for one at best and you explode onto C. And now here's going to come my next diagram, which I've prepared for us. Okay. So when you explode onto a site, you're probably wondering, well, how do I route aggressively? Well, here's how you route aggressively. So you'll notice that certain paths, such as pathing this way during the C hit, 
pathing this way during the B hit and pathing this way during the A hit are not recommended. And the reason why I'm going to show you is I find these to be lower conversion than these other routes which I've highlighted. And so the yellow rectangle here indicates essentially where like the path started. And the green rectangle indicates like the ideal final zone for you to chill in. Like consider this like your overheat chart. Like I'm playing duelist. I got the frag on the contact explode and I'm pushing through. Where do I want to go? What's my goal? So let's talk about the B route. So notice I did not recommend coming up this way. I recommended coming this way. And then I marked this as the green zone. Now, why is this corner the green zone? Put yourself in the B retaker's shoes. And I've put myself in these shoes and I've watched people in these shoes. When the bomb's down B, anybody riding this way, I have not yet seen them clear that corner. They come out this way and they just look B. So as this guy here, you can pretty much just look to catch the C rotators. Okay. And this angle essentially doesn't exist. Noted you'll be clearing that corner now and you'll be seeing nobody because you're in silver and people aren't thinking about this in your game. Waste of time. <laughs> so you, you kill the C rotators and then you can look this type of way and you can play like this type of overheat angle. On the C hit is very similar. Uh, I don't like pushing this way because you, um, you can run into multiple threats. If you keep overheating, you kind of have to chill over here. And I find this retake option for the defenders to be too strong to allow them to take because of this high low option and mix up i really like taking control of this space during the c hit and playing out here additionally if you're on like phoenix i'm sure you can tell like the pattern recognition in your brain should be going off massive wide open space free kills Okay, so this is the direction I want you overheating on the C hit. And there's two routes to take on the C hit. I'm down for you to route this way. Of course, as I mentioned, up against the wall. I'm also down for you to route this way. Like this type of routing is good too. Uh, you generally want to split that routing up during your hit. And then we'll talk A. A, regardless of if we take the door or not, I've recommended you avoid this zone entirely and you route towards heaven. Let me explain. Lots of people do push this. And I think it's a huge mistake because this routing proposes a unsolvable conundrum to the pusher. And let me try and demonstrate. The conundrum is where does the crosshair go? And the answer is, I don't know. I hope you can see. There's too many threats when you lurk this way. Um, I'm not saying never do it, but I'm saying generally, unless you have a like overwhelming amount of information about where the enemies are positioned, this type of push is too dangerous because one, two, three, there's too many angles that can all be looking at you. So instead, I recommend that your overheat route goes up heaven. And I hope you can see why. Look how straightforward this is. It's so simple. Yeah, so this overheat angle, super good. And it's a flash zone if you're playing a flash agent. Because look at all this open space. The open space is everywhere. You're going to see this re reoccurring pattern. This is just why flash duelists are kings. They're kings on this map. Everyone else is crying. Okay, so that's the A overheating routing. I'm going to show the graph now again one more time so you understand and can internalize it. And oh yeah, one last thing I do want to point out about this. Look at this routing from the A towards B. And there's an important detail here that I don't want you to forget. When you route this way, I'm hugging this wall and I'm crouching up over here as I route towards my overheat path. And I'm sure it's kind of intuitive as to why. Because uh, this angle is too dangerous right here. You don't want to give this fight to these players other than, of course, when you have to. It's like right here, but you want to get up and it's sort of like on ascent when you're crouched here and denying this market angle from seeing you. OK, this is the pattern. Don't forget it. So that's why this routing through B is hugging this uh, this vertical wall here, because you're trying to keep the amount of danger that you can face isolated to one just like this then you'd route this way clear these guys then you come over and we're hogging off our gourds okay um and i saw somebody mention i didn't explain why not to push this way i felt like it was kind of intuitive it's similar to um the problem of stairs you can't push too far out because once again conundrum so you kind of have to play tight uh, this flash is not bad, but generally speaking, I find it too hard to route somewhere safe in this way 
You can do it. Like, this is quite good coming up here. And if you get a good flash off, I just haven't found it to be nearly as high conversion as this routing. And so I just recommend this routing on average. But if this isn't working for you, you can try the other one, but I'm just not recommending it as best. Okay. So offense, lots of contact plays, lots of explosive play. And especially this is where contacting comes in because you're wondering like, oh, but how do we rotate? Because let's look at Haven. And this is the big difference about this map. So on Haven, you generally do not five stack death ball because you'll lose the mini game. And the mini game is essentially you're trying to hit a site with one or zero defenders because the defense can't put two people on every site. It doesn't work. That'd be six people. Okay. That on Lotus, we can solve this problem while five stacking. So in Haven, if you've got five and you all push A and they stop you, then you have to rotate and you potentially die to these like advanced lurk angles and it's a pain. But on Lotus, if you five stack push A and you encounter friction and you can't push, you can actually just push B without rotating back. You see? Or if you're contacting C and you find too much friction here, you can actually just push B without having to rotate back. And of course, if you're contacting B and you run into too much friction, you can rotate to either one. So because of these like additional rotation options that are further up on the map, they're very advanced in terms of where they're placed. Um, these death balling is a lot stronger on this map. You don't really need to have a lurker controlling this space for you because you don't need that space to hit a you don't need it you can just come through this door and route right onto a and smoke that guy off if you're really worried about him and then this guy's just on a retake so map control on this map is very interesting it's um it's very different because of this door and this uh breakable door a lot of the time the offense can sort of get away with getting a bit greedier than they can on a map like haven because on a map like haven if you're all the way up here on a and you want to cancel the A hit, you just have to leave. Versus a map like Lotus, when you're all the way up here on A and you want to cancel the A hit, you've got options. You've got options. And because of these options, it's a bit more fine to contact death ball, in my opinion. So let's go back and let's talk just general good rules of thumb. So as a good rule of thumb, I like um, essentially trying to condition the enemy team into contesting some space from us. So on offense, I would recommend lots of A and C play until you've sort of conditioned them into getting very aggressive for it. And the reason why is similar to what I was just explaining. So essentially, the enemy team doesn't want to push too far up on these lurk angles because you can route through the midsection of the map. So you sort of want to bait the enemy team into doing this, essentially by playing very aggressively and death ball -y. Because if you death ball C a couple rounds in a row, then this guy on C is going to play more further up in position and they're going to try and get info for the team faster. And this guy being further up is going to incentivize them into flanking and flanking is actually quite bad on this map. If we're routing correctly on offense, this person is going to flank. They're going to be looking for us. They're going to look for us a, except we're never going back. We're just going to break this door and go B or we're going to hit a, and this flanker either way is crying in the club because we're never playing over here. So if these dudes just keep flanking, you're pogging. Okay. Flanking, I think, this is my opinion, I don't think it's very strong on this map. It's very difficult because teams generally are holding sites from the sites themselves. They're not really, they don't need the space. Like if we compare it again to Haven, because everyone compares this map to Haven, I'm going to show you how different they are. If we look at Haven, a flanker having control of A main is really rough. It's really rough. And I don't even think I need to explain why. This is painful if a flanker controls this. But now let's look at Lotus. And let's give a flanker control of a main okay so what <laughs> like it's no big deal like what are they doing i don't even need to explain to you why i don't think the flanker is as big of a threat on this map as it is to haven because on this map our post plant is generally revolved around this type of space this is usually where we're playing in our post plant and so this guy's not really a problem. Similar idea on C. On C, however, there are some times where you'll play post plant from mound. Uh, I'm going to explain now plant locations. I got some good plants for you guys. Playing post plant from tree seems bad due to flash zone. No. I mean, if they've taken all of site control on you and have a pop flash agent here, then yeah, it's bad. But I'm pretty sure I could have swung before that event. Just fine. So we'll talk open plants first. 
This is the best open plant on A. It's exposed to any potential lurker we may have who's coming up this way. It's exposed to tree from here. And it's exposed to heaven right here. This plant, very cash money. If you're playing Harbor, I recommend trying to orb yourself off in this type of place and get the bomb down. B is very similar. Let me pull up my sheet to make sure I've got it right. Yes. So B is right on the edge of this ring right here. And similar idea, it's exposed to these people. It could come out heaven. It's exposed to this guy. Exposed to this angle. And exposed to this angle. And importantly, you want it pretty wide here because it's a flash zone. You want to be... Oh my goodness. You want to be able to flash them off and get your free kills in these post plants. So what you do is you'd like jiggle, shoot some bullets, get them looking at you, and then you can flash and take your free kill because this person has nowhere to run. Nowhere to run when they're blind here. And now see, this is the one that I think is a bit up for debate and I would encourage you to experiment. So this plant on the corner is very good. Very good. Um, it's exposed to the mound, very hard to diffuse, and it's exposed to this angle up here and this angle down here. The problem is this waterfall angle kind of has to walk pretty far up to see you. And there is a plant more like there, which is still exposed to mound. And it's a bit more exposed to waterfall here. And it's a bit more exposed to this angle. However, getting this plant down in the right spot is very tough. Very tough. Um, like sometimes you'll mess it up and it'll be a, somebody will be able to diffuse on like an edge here, as you can see, not exposed to mound. I find it just too difficult. So I prefer this one as yes, um, Cairo has talked about. Most people aren't overheating waterfall anyways, um, but there is a plant in this spot. I could not find a consistent lineup or a good one where there's absolutely no good diffuse spot, but I'm encouraging you to experiment. Bam! Future Wuhujin here. My lovely tier 3 Discord subscriber, Morkan, figured it out for me because I was too dumb. Make sure the entire diffusible area falls inside this simple green polygon. Thanks, Morkan. Back to the video. You can potentially get it exposed to all three, but this corner, a lot easier. A lot easier. And then this lets you, of course, play your post plant condition of overheating in this type of direction and contesting the space very linearly and that's the name of the game like if you can test the space with your team get a guy here get a guy here swinging off of them it's so straightforward to control the map same idea like you want to contest waterfall there's so many contacts okay and then we're going to talk lurking because i just recommended lots of death balling however lurking is super good so let's say our team is death balling a and we're playing cypher on this map so there's inherently two lurk options b and c and i generally would recommend that you favor um b here in this type of position i like keeping the chain connected um and i find it very common that the team is going to like break open the door and come to help you and if the team starts like rushing towards b our team this way then the defenders a lot of the time they forget about this lurk option in the short term they forget about this and they like commit to dealing with this option because they hear everybody coming. And if you happen to be close, you can get a lot of value. So now the other option is the C lurk, or I'll call it like an opposite lurk. So your team's going A and you're going on the opposite side. And I pretty much only recommend this if you feel like you were, can't condition them into pushing out. Like they're really passive. If they're really passive and you're not really worried about them pushing out B, you can sort of like pretend your chain is still connected and you can even slap a trip if you're super worried about it. And then the thing with the C lurk is your team's rarely gonna reset from A and come C. That doesn't happen on this map much. I would not recommend it. However, you can get a really, really strong flank because you're less likely to get cleared and you can come up this way a lot faster. And this type of angle is really good for us right here. Because the angles come one at a time. The fights come one at a time. So let's do our quick summation. Okay, offense, lots of stacking and very rarely full map rotations. I want like single site rotations. So you'll stack like A and look to rotate B on occasion very aggressively. Or you'll stack C look to rotate B or you'll stack B and look to rotate to either of them. Very rarely will you start C and end A. I'm not saying it doesn't happen, but rarely. 
rarely. Lurker mostly wants to try and capitalize on the noise that his teammates are going to make to find kills on the defenders who feel pressured into looking certain directions to stop the defenders from their fast rotations or stop the attackers from their fast rotations. And then pop flashes, pop flashes. I mean, you can already see, I've got the diagram up. These are just defensive side ones. Like I showed, when you overheat, there's flash zones everywhere on this map. They're everywhere. And you need to keep that in mind. I hope this has helped. We're going to need to go over Lotus VODs to get like more in depth on how this strategy plays out in our games. But that's generally the TLDR of how I think the map should mostly be played. Not my splitting? Correct. Yeah. Um, Your routing during hits will be splitting. Like when you route C, split in this type of manner for the hit. Similar idea for A. When you commit, you can use the door. Optimal default smokes. I think that's a bad question. <laughs> I don't have a good answer to that question because there aren't really in my opinion, optimal default smokes on this map. A lot of the time I'm playing Harbor and Harbor's really, really creative in terms of how he throws his wall. Like you really are just throwing this thing to try and take the spacing at the bomb down. Most specifically, you found Raze Jack is so much more value, early A main, half wall control, very different because you're an immortal, everyone stuns with breach A main every round. Yeah, I get what you're talking about. You're talking about um this defensive play where you like stall here and you're talking about the Raze Nade being really strong for that. I think in general, just having a breach is enough to stall this really well. Like breach after shock stun, even a Phoenix Molly. Like, yeah, you're going to have crazy ace rounds with the raise nade. But I think that's because the attackers are making a mistake and not because um, your comp is really strong. Like, I think this problem is going to go away soon. How do you contact A? Um, I like the harbor wall or um, a smoke that blocks off this line of sight right here. Harbor can throw it from here. Uh, smoker can throw it from anywhere. We ran, recommend positioning with op. Um, on A side, I like opping in this type of region. If they're smoking frequently, then I'd probably look to contest through it with some flash. Get your shot. This type of rotation path towards top side B is very good. And uh, over at this way, up on top of this uh, vertical angle is very good from C with the op. Offensive opping is also pretty decent. If you route, uh, I'll show you... Uh, this op routing is really good. And yeah, I, I even op on Harbor on offense. And let me show how I like doing that. Time's more precious than a bullet. Like you can wall up this way. And as the wall goes, you can get this space. And then you can post and your wall's going to go down. I walled up a bit wrong. Right it needs to cover over there. As you can see, I'm a washed player insight on my yours a tier rather than s tier uh, because i tried to keep s tier to just one team composition i can't put five agents in s tier because then one of them's i would pick one over the other s tier is like the comp that i think is best in solo queue like if you're willing to put in a million hours of prep then this agent moves up this agent moves up this agent moves up uh ko might move up not sure Raze probably moves up. But if you're just trying to run off my guide today and win games, these agents require minimal prep and they pop off, if that makes sense. Uh, I'd hesitate making an agent like Yoru S tier on any map just because it requires a lot of prep. Even if he is the best agent, objectively speaking, if I'm talking like from a solo queue standpoint, you're picking an agent to just try and win. Unless you've put in hours on this guy, you're crying. But yeah, there's lots of cool Yoru setups. I could even show some. I showed the flash through the hole. Um, on C, I know there's a flash that's undodgeable. If you bounce it correctly off this pillar at a certain angle, it like barely appears over this edge at the last second. Like this. You bounce it off the mound and it goes way up. I'm talking more about like it being undodgeable though, okay? Like it only appears in the last second. Like this. Like that's going to flash, I believe, right above this. Oh, wait, no. This one's double height. No, yeah, that's correct. Yeah, it's flashing right above it. Like all this Yoru tech, man. Like if you're super prepped on the agent, I think he's definitely S tier. Hey, Heaven, you can do a Grim Wall, get off angle to the B link rotate angle. Oh, I see what you're talking about. Is it like this angle? <laughs> yeah. Wait, that's troll. That's super troll. 